today we're going to discuss how to get the cheapest miniatures possible if we're buying via eBay. Hello and welcome back to War Pets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're all about getting the most miniatures on the tabletop for the least money possible. Now I've mentioned this a few times before, but eBay trading is something that I do know quite well. For a number of years I used to buy in big batches of model soldiers off eBay, then resell them in individual units and squads, maybe repaired a bit, for a small profit while I was at university. It was very helpful for building up my own collections as well. It's how I basically managed to acquire the vast majority of my quite big infantry Imperial Guard army while making profit at the same time. Though one of the good things about Warhammer is that it does tend to hold its value. Unless the kits are directly replaced, then you can generally resell what you've got at the moment for a decent amount. In this video, I'm going to go over the various tricks that I've picked up along the way for buying models as cheap as possible online. I'm not lying that some of this does require a small amount of effort, but if you've got a little bit of spare time, then being able to acquire models at a lot cheaper could be something that's worthwhile looking into. So let's start with some general principles then. First of all, it's generally a trade-off between time and the amount of money that you're likely to save. Basically, if you keep on waiting for quite a long time, then generally good deals do tend to come along. And you tend to pay a premium for buy it now listings, or just selecting the best deal that you can see on eBay at the moment. Things do get turned over quite rapidly. If you're prepared to wait a little, then better deals are likely to come along just by being patient. Possibly the biggest advantage I think I had was the ability to resell models. Basically, a lot of people tend to sell Warhammer in big armies online. Say they might sell 100 guard infantry, 3 tanks, and maybe a couple of outdated army books, all in one big batch to get rid of it, and it'll often be a mix of models that no one really wants. Say if you were just looking to get loads of Cadian infantry, for example, if you could buy that lot that most people won't want, and then resell all the tanks, you're likely to be able to get quite a good deal on that infantry. For certain listings, this can allow you to acquire models at a profit. Say if someone was selling four different tanks from four different 40k factions, almost no individual collector would want to buy that. You could buy the listing, say keep the Space Marine Predator tank that you wanted, and resell the others as individual listings, and that would genuinely be a situation that you might well even make a profit while keeping one model. You need to try and ensure what you're getting is reasonably good quality, good pictures help, just make sure that there isn't some sort of fatal flaw with the model, such as being coated in a ridiculous amount of paint, or some terrible assembly that's going to make it unusable for your purposes. In general though, even models in bad condition will resell at reasonable value on eBay, though obviously you're going to be getting a lot less for them than pristine kits. For example, if Lehman Rust tanks sold for £20 on eBay, I'm not saying they necessarily do, but then I'd expect even quite a heavily damaged one go for at least £5 or so, so even if the tank kit is kind of junk, you can still get some value out of it. When looking at eBay, I'd certainly consider the alternatives, such as getting new kits either from Games Workshop or from discount retailers if you have them available. New kits might allow you to build the specific options that you want the kit to be armed with, or perhaps allow the use of magnets to swap out different weapons. Generally pre-built, pre-owned kits aren't going to allow you to do that, and at least you're going to be sure of the quality if it is coming new, unless you're buying Finecast or something. I'd also keep an eye out on Facebook forums or local groups as well. They can have some of the best deals, but obviously what you get from them is kind of completely random, and you're nowhere near as likely to be finding the exact miniatures that you want compared with a big generalised marketplace such as eBay. Finally, it sort of depends on what sort of miniatures are fitting your purposes, whether or not you can make do with painted models. Personally, I find that people tend to get a little bit too hung up on models not being painted. For example, I showcase my own Imperial Guard army all painted white. Pretty much all of that is second-hand, apart from some of the more recent tank editions. I didn't paint strip a single model for that one. All of it was just white sprayed over the top of whatever colour scheme happened to be there in the first place. Naturally, it won't work if you've got too much caked on paint and you obscure all the details, but I've found that in my experience it tends to be less of a factor than you might think. So let's get into actually searching for items then. Obviously you can just bong in the details of the exact models that you want to eBay, or the faction that you want, as again you are likely to get the best deals on big mixed armies that no individual collector will generally want, and then resell some of the bits and pieces that you're not interested in. Remember to include alternative names for the faction, such as Imperial Guard for Astra Militarum forces, as a lot of people will be selling collections from quite a long time ago. I find that some of the best deals are on some very generalist search terms. Basically, when I was trying to buy models to resell, I would have a whole load of save searches bookmarks on my taskbar, or in a given folder. Basically, I would put something like Warhammer Army in parenthesis, and put on a couple of filters, such as UK only, less than £300. And I typically tended to go for auctions, so I'd usually filter for that as well. You can also search things like bundle, job lot, collection, tanks or vehicles and then make sure that search comes up in the Warhammer 40,000 section. 
there's different item categories on eBay, so basically just put that one in and select the right section. And you're likely to get a lot of people with these mixed sort of lots who might not 100% know exactly what they're selling. I also found that Warhammer, as two separate words, was a particularly good search, as that pretty much guarantees that people don't know even how to spell the name of the thing that they're trying to sell. When I was trying to find items to resell on eBay, I'd basically save an absolute ton of these searches and look through them at least fairly regularly, assessing each lot and deciding whether I wanted to put a bid on for it. I know that's a bit of a generalist approach and not necessarily likely to get you the exact models that you want, but it can be good for more common things such as basic troop choices for factions, particularly some of the older kits, say Tactical Marines or Imperial Guard troops, for example. On eBay, there's two main types of sale, the auction or the buy it now option. Auctions run for a set time, and buy it now so you can just click and buy immediately. For getting the best value, I tend to find that auctions tend to be the better option, partly because a lot of people just don't want to wait till the auction finishes to make their purchase, they just want to buy something then and there. Auctions also tend to be used a bit more by people who aren't 100% sure of the value of what they're selling, and in general mean that they aren't going to go as an absolute premium as the people who do know the value and might be pricing it very appropriately. On the flip side though, buy it now is good as it does get you miniatures faster, and obviously it's a bit more reliable because you don't actually know whether you're going to win any given auction. In terms of getting the absolute best value out of Buy It Now auctions, you can also search the Buy It Now format in Warhammer 40k and look for the most recent uploads. People tend to be fairly on it with spotting good deals, so they're only likely to be around for a little while if someone's listed a Buy It Now auction, which is grossly undervalued. So sometimes it can be worth a quick flick through the first few lots to see what's been most recently uploaded on a general search term, such as Warhammer Army. And occasionally I did find some good gems from that, where someone had priced their things very cheap indeed. If you do see a particularly interesting buy it now offer, that you'd be very interested in buying but not be prepared to pay the price that they're asking for, you can potentially send them an offer and say how much you would be prepared to pay for that auction, or even say a little bit under what you would be prepared to pay if you'd like to haggle. I probably wouldn't get into the habit of doing this too regularly to be honest, more experienced sellers will generally just be ignoring this sort of thing, so I'd only think about doing it for select lots, so you're not just wasting a lot of your time and a lot of other people's. Again, some other great deals can be from things that people have listed as collection only, the sort of things where people have asked you to physically go round to their house and collect the item from them and pay them there. If it's a lot that's incredibly undervalued, you can ask them if they would be prepared to post. I generally shoot them a message saying, I'd be really interested in buying this, I know you said it was collection only. I would happily pay £10 for the shipping or something like that. I'm not worried if a couple of models do get slightly damaged in shipping, I know that that can happen. I'd be happy to bid very highly, and I'd be happy to place a high bid, or buy your item outright. I tended to find that that actually had quite a high success rate. Around about a half to a third of the people who had contact would say, yeah, that's fine, and I got some really good deals that way. Another way that you can potentially save yourself money on high postage costs is that when people like to post armies, they often like to throw in massive outdated rule books that you have absolutely no interest in. Say so if they were selling something alongside the 5th edition Warhammer 40k big rulebook, that's going to add a lot to the postage cost, because it's just so heavy. You can say, I'd be absolutely happy for you to leave that out, I'm really not interested in that, but I'd still pay full price for the models, if that would save me some money on shipping. So I've just talked a bit about buy it now, but I do feel that auctions will generally get you better value on the whole. In terms of what will be a good auction to target, I'd generally go for ones that have multiple parts that no one person would really want together, and then be prepared to sell some of the other models in it to get you the best deal. A prime example would be this one on the right. I just found this one based on my Warhammer Army search in the UK. It's basically got a ton of random miniatures in that tray on the left, a whole ton of hobby supplies, some of which will be useful, a lot of which won't. A good sign though that the seller has priced it low is when you see a fair few bids on the same item, indicating that they just priced it very low to get rid of it, and then people have been bidding it up to try and get towards its actual value. Obviously that's not 100% reliable, but it is a good soft sign. Conversely, you certainly can buy single units or vehicles individually. That will naturally be a bit of a faster way of getting the actual miniature that you want, but you are likely to pay a bit of a premium for that specific option, rather than taking a bit more of a generalist approach. Other things that can make an auction really quite interesting to me are evidence of quite bad paint schemes or poor assembly, things that might really turn people off, but actually I might find really easy to fix. Naturally it depends on the thing in question. If you're handy with paint stripping, you could get rid of a paint scheme altogether, but if something is just horribly painted but painted very thinly, then I could just paint quite happily straight over the top. If things have been weirdly assembled or missing pieces, then I guess it depends on the thing in question, but in particular things like character models that are missing a limb, you can almost always convert something pretty appropriate looking to stand in, and you might even get more kudos on the battlefield for having an interesting converted version of that character. 
In general, the auctions that are run by more professional looking people, people who have really clear photographs and are clearly listing huge batches of models, generally aren't going to be quite as high yield as they know what they're doing and they're going to be getting the maximum amount of value out of their models. Basically, you're likely to pay a premium there for knowing exactly what you're getting and not having to put in any extra work sorting through miniatures. Finally, if you see any items that are completely mislabeled in terms of calling them something they're not, then that could be a potentially really lucrative one, as it means that people aren't going to be able to find that item by searching for what it's called. I remember a prime example, when I bought a Baneblade, it was only labelled Warhammer Tank, meaning that anyone who actually wanted Baneblades wouldn't be able to find it just by searching the word Baneblade. I was very tempted to keep that one, unfortunately that did get resold eventually. When you've found a potential listing, you really need to know the market value of the things that are in it. And I honestly wouldn't base this on Games Workshop prices at all. A lot of the time they just don't reflect the value of second-hand miniatures. eBay literally has one of the best tools that you can possibly use for finding the value of used Warhammer. Basically you search for the name of the miniature, and then there's a panel of checkboxes on the left-hand side of your screen. Scroll down a bit, and you'll find an option to show only sold listings. This will tell you what people managed to make for the item when they sold it as an individual lot. So say if you were mainly interested in buying Imperial Guard Cadian Infantry, and the lot also came with a random Sentinel which you didn't want, then I would do this search to both find the rough value of Cadian Infantry and Sentinels on the general eBay market. As an example, if we're looking at the price of Cadians, I search for Cadian Shock Troops, and you get a whole number of different searches. The ones that we're most interested are the ones that are clearly second-hand, pre-painted, and then being sold in a group of the same miniatures, much like you get in more professional sellers. The top one, we've got 27 slightly more battered Cadians, with a lot of them being broken or having some slightly weird conversions. I thought there'd be roughly around about 20 to 23 odd of those, that are at least in reasonably good condition. So I took the total price that they sold for, including postage and packaging, and from that lot it looks like you're paying about £1.10 per Cadian model if you bought it from that lot. Down below we've got a second example, which is pretty much the same thing, but 17 Cadians, and they sold for a bit more, partly because they're just a lot easier to see there, and they're all quite clearly in pretty good condition, only painted quite thinly. These ones sold for a bit more, at £1.55 per model, so at least you can now know a ballpark figure. If you wanted to buy Cadians, then you could pretty much fairly easily do so, for around about £1.30 per miniature, if you just bought them in the conventional way, and that allows you to assess the big multiple lots. Say you were looking at a lot that had 20 Cadians and 1 Sentinel, that means that you could say that the 20 Cadians are roughly worth £26, and pre-owned Sentinels go for somewhere between £10 and £15, so £38 were what you'd be generally be able to get that auction for if you bought the components individually, and you can decide what sort of saving you're aiming for for that. Say if you landed the auction for £28 or something, then you'd be getting a pretty reasonable saving compared with buying them individually. Bear in mind that if you are reselling, you won't get the proceeds of the postage, and eBay also charges some fees, around about 15%, when you take into account PayPal as well. So if you did sell the £12 Sentinel back, you might only make something like £8 or £9 instead. Though obviously you can try and sell it as well as you can. A couple of clear pictures and basic repairs can basically mean that it sells for way more than some of your competitors might. All in all, even if we just took averages for that, it would mean that we've acquired 20 Guardsmen for £20 rather than 26 so a small saving there. In terms of actually placing bids on auctions, my typical pattern would usually be to assess the value of the listing. I think I'd usually place a maximum bid at something like 70% of what I will be able to resell it for in individual items, giving you 30% to make some profit, and then I'd usually just leave my maximum bid to that amount and move on to the next thing. Now bid sniping is something that you certainly can do on eBay, but it's personally not something I've ever bothered with, as I tended to be in the position where I was placing far too many bids to be worth keeping track of any individual ones, unless it was something really, really important. Basically bid sniping is placing a bid right before the auction finishes, and on average, if you enter a bid in really late, it does on average tend to bring down the amount of price that you pay for miniatures, or any eBay lots in general for that matter, just because people don't have enough time to react to the new price and think whether they'd pay for a little bit more over that. So if you did really, really want an item, then I'd think about looking at the time that it's going to finish and maybe placing a bid in the last hour or even the last minute. It's sort of a very highly specialised sniper approach versus the massive bombardment approach where I just looked through as many auctions as possible, placed bids on anything that I thought I could easily make a profit on, and had a bit of a fire and forget approach and waited to see if I'd have any success with that bidding later in the week. If you really do want good value, you need to be prepared to let any individual listing go. It might just get bid up far more than it's actually worth. 
and even if it would be super helpful to get those exact units for your army, you need to weigh off as to whether or not it's actually worth it compared with the money that you might save in the future. Obviously my tactic of placing lots of bids on lots of items can be a bit swingy, it means that you might accidentally win quite a lot of them, so you need to be prepared for that, and I wouldn't bid more than you could actually afford to spend. I guess being able to quite easily resell things without too much effort meant that I could just resell anything when I did get too much of it, so it kind of protected me from that possibility. But obviously if you're just looking to acquire a few miniatures, then I'd keep it to a bit more of a limited strategy. So in general, I've had very positive experience from eBay, but it is worth noting that not, not everyone out there is an angel, and you can have poor experiences, either from people who are deliberately trying to mess you about, or people who are just plain stupid. If the contents of what you're buying isn't really very clear, you can certainly ask them to clarify, or ask for another picture or two, and a lot of sellers will be happy to do oblige. I'd have a look at positive and negative feedback scores. If they have no feedback whatsoever yet, I certainly wouldn't be 100% against buying from them, but obviously it's at a much higher risk than if they have loads of feedback. Basically, if you can see that a seller's a big multi-seller and has something like 99% positive feedback, you can be fairly sure that you're in quite safe hands and they will be able to do basic customer service if things go wrong. In general, eBay does have pretty good protection for buyers, with not as described item cases being fairly easy to open, and if there's legitimate problems, then eBay will often step in to allow you to get your money back, the same with items not arriving. Having said that, I'd still not personally want to buy anything that was extremely expensive on eBay, things in the few hundred pounds would really make me a bit nervous, as there is a lot of potential money that you're putting on the line if it doesn't work out. I tended to prefer multiple medium-sized lots, where it wasn't a complete disaster if anyone didn't work out, though as I said, in general I've had no real problems. If anything has been too bad when I received it, I've generally either been able to make very easy repairs to it, or return to the seller if it's significantly not as described. So I hope that little guide has given you at least some food for thought with eBay. It can definitely have a solid application in getting you cheaper miniatures for your army, although it does have limitations as well. If you've got any other insights or things to add to this, please let me know down in the comments. It's always interesting to hear new ideas and interpretations, so I look forward to reading anything that you come up with. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to the channel to keep on seeing more buying and selling videos like this, and plenty of general Warhammer 40k tactics content. And if I've been helpful to you in terms of getting you better deals or anything, then any support on Patreon for the channel is greatly appreciated, as it is what allows me to keep on making all these YouTube videos. As well as keeping the channel going, there's also plenty of other benefits for Patreons, including seeing videos early each week, regular polls where you help to decide what sort of videos come next, and regular prize draws where I post out miniatures to Patreons no matter where you are in the world. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is in the description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.